ISIS has been targeting Christians. Many have fled here to the safety and protection of northern Iraq. China, an exciting country, the biggest nation in the world. And the quest came for Bibles and we brought them in by the thousands, tens of thousands. Then they said, give us one million. Give us one million. We just did it in obedience to God's commission. It was so big and bold that endeavor. We did it in one night, but we did it in Jesus' name. The devastating influence of Boko Haram and other Islamic extremists is not only felt in the northeast of Nigeria. This brutal violence, driven by radical ideology, also disrupts cross-border communities of Cameroon, Chad and Niger. The far north region of Cameroon has been especially hard hit. In 2020, Open Doors registered at least 41 attacks against villages. 
and Christians always face the danger of individual assault or kidnapping while they cultivate their farms. Many people have been forced to flee multiple times. One of them is Fadi Zara, who once lived in the village of Barawa, near the Nigerian border. When I was in my village, Barawa, 2013, the Boko Haram came to attack our village. They came by the night. They killed many people and burned our churches. So they, we fled to, to this village, Vreke, at Cameroon. They come again by the night. They burn all the, the houses of people. They carry many properties of the people. So they, we fled to other village down south. They follow us and they are kidnapping many people, like ladies. So they, we fled to Geleve, 2015, in October. They came by the night again. They came and burned the, the churches, they killed even, I cannot count the people that they have killed them. Fadi spent a few years in the village of Zelevet. Her life there was typical of the lives of thousands of people trying to survive in these border areas. During the day, they work in and around their houses and farms. But before sunset, they climb the surrounding mountains to spend the night there for fear of yet another Boko Haram attack. We can pass the night in the mountain. By the morning, we came to, to home and go to do work at farm. But by the night, we are going to, to work to the forest for us to get sleep there. Living like this was simply not sustainable. After yet another violent attack, Fadi and her family had had enough. They packed their few belongings and fled yet again, this time to the town of Koza, which is where Open Doors recently found them. During the first seven months of 2021, Open Doors distributed emergency aid to more than 3,000 Christians in Cameroon. C'est au travers de ces vivres, de ces matériels, tu viens visiter nos bien-aimés ceux qui traversent des moments difficiles. I got uh, rice, fish, and bucket, soap, and corn, a mat, and wrapper, and vegetable oil. If you are not in, a, in your village, resting, living at the village of other people is very difficult. You don't have farm to do work there to get something to eat. Apart from being displaced for many years, the continuing Boko Haram violence has left another scar on Fadi's heart. Her younger sister was kidnapped sometime in 2015. Her name was Vusa. She was 14 years when they kidnapped her. She go to farm with her friends. She, she did not return back among them. Some people say they did not, they have killed her. They did not leave her alive. Some people say they can't kill a young lady like that. They will just marry her like their wife. You don't know something to say. My mother had this information. She don't know how to, something to say. After two weeks, she get back. Because he's thinking for as we, we leave our village, and then he saw many of our neighbors, they killed them. She saw them, their blood on the ground, and then she, they kidnap her daughter. So he just take a petition and, and he's, she died. Even I want to sleep, I can't. Many things came like a vision, dreams. At every time I'm crying because I'm orphan. My father has died and the BH, BH kidnapped my sister. My mother again, she can't die. I am only one. 
Receiving the emergency aid was one of a few happy moments for Fadi these days. It had been a long time since she and other displaced people received help. All this thing, I am surprised for getting this thing in my life today. I am very, very happy. Especially this wrapper. It's uh, two years today I did not get new wrapper like this. But she give us today, I'm very, very happy. <laughs> I need that God stay with me in every situation to do his wonderful power in my life. For me to see his face at the end of the day. Holy Ghost, do it again. Do it again in my life. Open my eyes to see Jesus. Do it again in my life. We don't know about the sheep. But this Ethiopian family is happy with these sheep and a cow that Open Doors has provided them to earn a living. Hiwat and her children have been accepted back into their community, even though they are still Christians. Previously, this family was hated for being Christian, but now Hiwat has regained at least some respect. The prayers and contributions of Open Door supporters are cornerstones to the happiness of this Ethiopian family. Before Hiwat became a widow, the community tolerated this Christian woman because she was married to a man who still followed the local beliefs, rituals and dietary rules. But when her husband died, Hiwat and her children were rejected for being Christians, for being different. There was one place where Hiwat and her children were always welcome, the local church, where their pastor keeps an eye on their well-being. During periods when the rejection from their community was tough, the pastor could see that Hiwat and her children were stressed. Hiwat refuses to reject Christ and go back to the traditions that she had left. Therefore, the community perceives the family as unholy. They consider food prepared by the hands of Christians unfit for human consumption. Just over a year ago, people in the community even burnt down her house. They wanted Hiwat and her children to become helpless and hopeless. <laughs> Instead of rendering this family helpless and hopeless, the opposite happened. Open Doors supported the local church to rebuild the house. Here Watt's new house was bigger and better than the house she had before. We also visited her a few times, proving to the community that this poor widow had friends who supported her. <laughs> Uh, 
ባረ ጎረቤቱም ቲ ያው አክስማ ማ ጎረቤቱ በጣም ንንም ዴት ጎረቤቱ አክቢዲኝ ይፍ ተቀንጤ ወዋኘ ሁደ ቀንጤ ባ ፍናቆ አራ ወዋኘ አርባ ነው ሁት ጎረቤቱ ቢዲኝ ባይግ አክ ጎረቤቱ ሲክ በረይ ባ ይዝገር ባረክ ወአክ ይዝገር ወሙ ዘንገ ወው ጋደ መሰል አደራሽ ቆርቆራ ነይ ባሃደ ጎረቤቱ አክ ሹሚኝ ህራይ ጎረቤቱ ንንም ዴ ጎረቤቱ ጠጋ ጠጋ ነው እሽዲት ዋሙ ዶባነነ ነው ዋሙ ወገናነነ ነው እሷ ቤት እየመጡ እሷ ደግሞ እግዚአብሔር ያደረገላትን ነገር ይያወራች ለነሱ እግዚአብሔር ድንቅና ተአምራት እግዚአብሔር በመድረ በዳ እንደማይጥል እግዚአብሔር ብቻኛ ያርዳት እንደሆነ ለሰዎች ተመሰክራለች እና መልካም ምሳሌ ነው የሆነችው በዚያ መንገድ ትልቅ ወንጌል እየተሰራ ነው ያለው ኢየሱስ የሙ ወገን ፈጠረ ነይታ በሃ ወገን ገላተ ምን ሰው ዶባም ነው Recently we gave her what a few sheep and a cow The milk and the offspring of these animals will generate some extra income. Hewat already owns a small plantation behind her house where she grows food. So, thanks to the help that Hewat received from her Christian family, she now has food, a house and some income. On top of that, she's regained some respect from her community. She is no longer completely shunned, even though people still think that her Christian way of life is wrong. ያው አሬት ዱዱት ነው ቡዱዱት ንቀይር ምርት ነው ንሙ ዘንግ ንሙ ዘንግ አሸውም ባሪ ነው ቡዱዱት ነው ያው በሐማሬ ሐማድ ለውጥ ነው ሐማድን ተሻሻለው በክርስቶስ ገለተ ቢዝገር ገለተ ይዝገር ሹም ከፈው አሪ ጥን ይሁን ወያ ተንዴ ፈቀድ በነለ እኔ ያብተን በፋጊሊ ይመ ለጥን ወ ፒፒዎ ጥን ዘን ወኑ ፎካ ጉምረ ካቤላ ሳምባ ፓማ ሰሞር ባላ አየቶ በጡ ማና ኒ ጥን መማ እንደ ሰባ አየ ቢሊ ቢሊ ወለ ፈጥን የፓማ ማን ቪም ወንደ በይሪ ባላ ካን ለ ቪም አፈኖም ጥን ሰማይ አውል ረነ ይይ ተንደ ምንበዋ ተን ገር ካው ወይ መስ ጂሃዲስት አታክስ ኢን ቡኪና ፋሶ ስታርተድ ኢን 2015 ኢን ሻርፕሊ ኢንክሪስድ ኢን 2018 ዚስ ዋዝ አ ኒው ፊኖሞናም ቢካስ ቡኪና ፋሶ ሃዝ አ ሂስትሪ ኦፍ ሪሊጂየስ ኮሂዥን ሶ ፒፕል ወር ቴከን ባይ ሰርፕራይዝ ወን ኤክስትሪሚስት ስታርተድ አን አግሬሲቭ ካምፔይን ኢን ዘ ኖርት ኦፍ ዘ ካንትሪ አጋንስት ስኩልስ ቸርቸስ ኢን ክርስቲያንስ sida zule ni wa mpam tonti tonna yidi le wa be kaya kanda yaneza abal ton wa mbira tibke le wa gugu ton no rafal ton da ho nto ton ko ya a tebu gugu ne ba fa nyakob ne re yemreti ke ton su ko anke la nto ton ti bambu anda ton to za ton ti ton tu bam sora ton se alon pasak ben da tane abna en ku ton don yeri en kiti ton zen wa kaya kanla ton wa anta kaya kanla kit ndebe da wendo ton ha bo soru be me ti sekriti on be ko yinga ton me during those first confrontations the jihadists only threatened christians isaiah and his wife and four daughters fled together with many other christians but some villagers refused to leave because everything they owned in life was there a few months later the extremists did more than just threaten am wali bana mpuka ye auto bre ki la bli bon on wa tinem ni sinde kete bi le yemre yemra tebtang nkel en koku bamba en kyang tenga na zakin la bikele nyaka nebe yo nkele njinri pera ba mikele mwenku nye la yatenda bo arama na maria se tara para para tara ko matabo in that period in 2019 many churches were attacked most of the christians fled from the north to safer parts of the country 
Many ended up in displacement camps. Others, like Isaiah, rented small houses or moved in with relatives. They paid for life's necessities by doing casual work. But when the COVID pandemic restrictions started, life became nearly impossible. Just before Christmas last year, Open Doors delivered emergency food aid to displaced Christians here. The number of families in need had grown sharply during the preceding months. Please pray that God will intervene in Burkina Faso, that he will stop the jihadist aggression in his time, so that our brothers and sisters can return to their homes, live as Christians and take care of themselves. Meanwhile, please help open doors to stand with people like Isaiah and his children in their spiritual and economic hardship. Cette église est une église vivante. Cette église est une église forte. Mais c'est une église ciblée. À l'heure actuelle, le diable a ses yeux fixés sur cette église du Burkina. Et le diable utilise toutes ses stratégies pour abattre cette église. Mais vous savez quoi? Nous avons un Dieu puissant. Nous avons un Dieu qui ne dort pas. Un Dieu qui ne somnole pas. Beaucoup de villages n'ont plus de chrétiens parce que ces gens, alors tuent sans pitié, ils égorgent et décapitent, alors et sans pitié, ils enlèvent la vie. C'est la raison pour laquelle aujourd'hui, surtout au nord, vous allez trouver des villages sans population, mais avec des églises arrêtées toujours, mais vides, parce que les chrétiens aussi sont partis. Là où ils se retrouvent, l'évangile continue à être prêché. Les gens n'ont pas peur de partager Christ. Ils ne se lassent pas de parler de Christ, de parler de son amour, de parler de sa grâce. L'Église a dit, écoutez, donnez ce que vous avez et nous allons essayer de voir comment est-ce que nous allons aider 
qu'ils ont fait avec les déplacés. L'Église a essayé de prendre le peu qu'ils ont, donner de leurs vêtements, de leurs chaussures, de ce qu'ils ont, le peu qu'ils ont, pour qu'on puisse aider aussi quand même les, les déplacés. Malgré ce soit les problèmes qui nous entourent, malgré ce soit les épreuves, malgré ce soit la mort, malgré ce soit la persécution, Christ est à nos côtés et il nous dit, vous n'êtes pas seul, je suis avec vous et je reviens bientôt.